What's the most legendary thing that happened at your school? My school was on a hill and the tallest building in the area. During Fleet Week, the Blue Angels flew what must have been 100 to 200 feet above it, shattered like 30 windows on the top floor of the school. I attended a high school called Rampart that, despite being a blue ribbon school, had serious budget issues. The budget problems got so bad that the principal started renting out the school gym to anyone willing to pay up to use it. Some guy rented the gym out for a Saturday night, saying he was going to hold a church dance. Instead, he held a rave that got so out of hand it destroyed the gym. The incident quickly grew into legend amongst the students. Many claimed to have been there or to have known the guy who threw the rave. We weren't able to use the gym for the rest of the year. They kept the doors locked, but there were constant attempts to force them open so we could see the damage. It didn't take long for the students to start referring to the school as rave part, and whenever we had to sing the national anthem, we would finish it in the home of the rave. The next year, we had a new principal too, but we never knew if the old principal was fired because of the rave incident. Two teachers screwing in an empty class. They thought they had locked the door. A student caught them. They are both fired. We have a school news channel that sometimes did live segments about new stuff going on. This was every morning in homeroom. One morning, they were doing a walkthrough of the new part of the school just built. They walk into a staircase, and some girl is sitting on some kid's face on the floor. This is at 8 a.m., and the entire school saw it. Some dude in English class sat next to the electrical outlet, so he decided to grab the kid next to him and stick a piece of metal into the outlet. Shocked the heck out of both of them. They were both fairly okay, but almost scared the teacher to death. Also, there was the time a girl screwed two dudes in the auditorium during a basketball game, and it was caught in the school camera. Her family ended up sending her somewhere else after that. This happened at my school in the UK around 2002. We had an indoor swimming pool at my school that was always really cold, and one particularly freezing December day, a bunch of us decided that we really didn't fancy having to do swimming for PE, so we dared this kid called Todd, who was pretty crazy, to crap in the pool. He said he would do it for 10 pounds. We had a quick whip round and managed to get the money pretty quick between us. To avoid getting caught, he decided to crap into the pool from the roof through a skylight, a lot of the buildings in our school had staircases on the outside, so it didn't take much effort for a couple of us to give him a leg up onto the roof. Once he was up there, we ran back down to the pool and looked through the windows. Sure enough, after a couple of minutes, we saw two or three of Todd's crap apples drop into the perfectly still pool, causing a gentle, disgusting, but oddly beautiful ripple. There was no PE for us that day. There was a huge sexting scandal where a handful of girls' images were being sent around. Well, when the school caught wind of it, they did the only thing a school could do. They held an assembly. Girls in the auditorium and boys in the gym. After an hour or so of, you shouldn't do that, they had the district attorney come in to talk about the legality of underage sexting. One of the seniors stood up and asked him if it was legal if they were over 18. He said yes, and the entire place went nuts. Everyone was cheering, clapping, and laughing. The principal walked over to the mic and said, who asked that? The guy stood up again and triumphantly said, Zen Master Steve! The audience once again erupted into cheers as he got called into the principal's office. I watched a friend sneeze and hit their head off a desk so hard that they gave themselves a concussion. There's a tradition here in Australia that the year 12s, final year of high school, usually have a day called Muck Up Day, where they play pranks or whatever in the school. Well, one year, the year 12s decided to screw with the whole school and placed roadwork signs and cones on one of the main roads next to the school. They diverted all that traffic through the school, essentially screwing up a lot of people's days. It is the best thing anyone has done on muck up day at our school. At the school where I used to teach, the students told me that years ago, someone swapped the science teacher's Bill Nye video with the hardcore adult tape. According to legend, the teacher didn't notice for quite a while, and the students watched several minutes of smut that day. I told my class that it was a stupid rumor, and I'm sure that never happened. When class was over, one of my students walked up and said, Mister, it's true. My brother was the one who switched that tape. Went to a boarding school, so several screw tapes and photos got leaked. This was 2004 to 2006, so before iPhones and whatnot. This mainly happened due to a program called MyTunes, where you could share your iTunes and movie libraries on the network. So people would accidentally drop their videos and photos into the folder that was shared without realizing it, and people bored looking for new music or whatever would stumble upon it. Once the administration found out about a video and the student was 18, Allegedly, he had to watch the video with the president of the school in his office in order to determine that it didn't happen on campus and that both participants were of age. Didn't get in trouble at all. I mean, glad that he didn't get in trouble, but could you imagine the awkwardness of having to sit in an office with a supervisor watching your own screw tape? I took an A-plus course in high school. We had an all-right-sized lab room for stripping computers and another room full of computers for other worker lessons. 
There were a few stuffed animals in the lesson room as a half-hearted attempt by my teacher to decorate. Those come into play later. My teacher kept finding certain history on one of the computers. It was always horribly spelled or incoherent searches, and she assumed it was a freshman being smart to impress his friends during a different class. One day, she gets fed up with it and makes a special project for us nerds in her a course. She gave us one of the lab computers and the smallest cam she could find and asked us to make a hidden camera. We complied and made a decent one and brought it into the other room, set it to record with more than enough hard drive space and aimed it at the perp's pewter. The next day, we fire out the vid and see one of the seniors coming in before school starts, googling some videos and giving himself the old wax job. He cleaned up with one of the stuffed animals and went about his business. She threw out the stuffed animals and the cops got involved. Kid got into trouble but went into the army after high school, so maybe it all worked out in the end. S sorry, the, the, the stuffed animal? The, the, it didn't do anything! Why that? Why Teddy? My junior year, the seniors put hay everywhere inside the freaking English building, where it basically looked like a farm. One of the admins wasn't even letting people look at the mess inside. Also, when I was in second grade, my school was supposed to have a fire drill, so for some reason the alarm wasn't going off. The lunch ladies decided it would be a good idea to set something in the kitchen on fire to make the alarm go off. They burned a good majority of the lunch that was supposed to be served that day. My high school was a bit on the sketchy side. During my sophomore year, there was a fire, and despite all the fire drills we'd been doing since kindergarten, no one really knew what to do. Some students made their way 10 blocks away to a Wendy's and a Waldbaum's, where they proceeded to rob both. At the end of my junior year, this sophomore threw his freshman girlfriend through a display case. She ended up with 13 stitches and he got a lovely pair of handcuffs. In my senior year, we got a new principal because the old one quit at the end of the year prior. Anyway, this was the year the fifth Harry Potter book came out, and even before the school year started, people were calling her Umbridge because of her reputation at her last school. Most of us thought she couldn't be that bad. Then we met her. She really was awful. To make matters worse, she was racist to boot. One of the black teachers didn't agree with her teaching style, so she fired his lazy and butt in her words. Within a week, the NAACP was at the school. Before she finally resigned, there was a student walkout and people started throwing cafeteria fruit at her whenever they saw her. We were all glad to be rid of her. When I was in grade 9, I was sitting in the computer lab working during the communications class. All of a sudden, we hear this loud revving getting louder and louder, something passing by very quickly then fading away. Our teacher ran out of the room after it, and crike, I had no idea the man could move that quickly. I was in crutches due to a sports injury, so I had to hobble out behind the rest of the class as we tried to find out what was going on. Apparently, one of the seniors brought an ATV to school and drove through the halls. What was legendary was that he somehow was never caught. This was in Canada in the early 2000s. There's a video floating somewhere on Facebook, which probably means it's lost forever. Pretty crappy, since it was literally one of the early digital cameras taped onto the guy's helmet. If I remember correctly, they let him in through an unused auto classroom side door, and he rode out the back. The area was very rural, so he probably drove it in instead of in the back of a pickup. Most likely rode it straight home too, so yeah, no proof at the end of it. A guy from my high school thought it would be a great idea to streak through the halls on the last day of school. After running around buck naked, people who witnessed it began whispering about some guy streaking. Pretty soon, the entire school was talking about this unknown mystery guy who ran around with his willy out. Biology teacher witnessed it and said, maybe it's just chilly today, but he isn't very well endowed. Soon after, he went to the front office and turned himself in. He apparently walked into a room full of administrators, all women, and just said, it was me. They all busted out laughing and said, just don't do it again, okay? Low blow from the bio teacher. Viewers, it is time for me to regale you with the story of Jeff. Jeff jumped off the roof of the chapel into a dumpster filled with empty cardboard boxes, 50 foot drop, 8x8 dumpster. Twice a week at our school, the junior and senior guys were on garbage recycling duty after lunch. We'd gather all the garbage bags and recycling from the classrooms and offices. The building was a school attached to a church with offices and a sort of community center. It wasn't a huge building, but it was pretty big. We'd take out all the garbage and trash out to the dumpster, which was set next to some sheds behind the building. That's how it all started. Jeff jumping off a 10 to 12 foot shed into a dumpster full of cardboard boxes. We'd laugh, roll the dumpster out to where the garbage guy could get to it. Someone else rolled it back when the garbage was collected. One day, Jeff climbed the backstop of the baseball field right near the dumpsters. That was a 25 to 30 foot drop, I think. He made that one look easy. Then he dropped in from out of a tree. That was probably about 40 feet. Finally, about a month from our graduation, he told us his plan. 
He had to break into the crawl space above the chapel, accessible by a padlock trapdoor on the third floor of classrooms, then climb up through the attic space of the chapel and onto the roof. The chapel parking lot sloped sharply by about 7 to 8 feet, which is where the 50-foot drop comes in. We saved boxes for weeks, set them up at the dumpster, put it in the parking lot about 15 feet from the chapel wall, and watched him jump. Our school has a huge statue of a Mustang at the front because our mascot is a Mustang, naturally. It's about 40 feet up above the entryway, so everyone sees it. One morning, there was a bright pink adult toy on it because Mustangs are male and our huge statue was neutered. It took them a while to get it off of there because they didn't want to ruin the statue or leave any piece of the evidence behind, and it was too heavy to remove from its place, so there it stayed, with a banner hung across the entryway blocking the statue. Nobody knows who did it except for the masterminds of the crime. For information, the school was in southwest Pennsylvania. Ha! <laughs> took him a while to get it off! My first day of high school. I was starting at a whole new neighborhood from moving and knew no one, so I kept to myself. I didn't handle crowds all too well, but I mustered the courage to get out of bed and get ready for school. I ran downstairs and talked to my dad about what I expected to get out of the day and ate breakfast. I walked out to the corner to catch the school bus, and that was awful. Nowhere to sit as everyone felt they each had their own dang seat. Story short, I made it to school. As soon as we made it to the school, I started walking to my locker. There were so many people, I was about to lose my mind, and I asked myself if it could get any worse. It did. A girl bumped me from behind to get ahead to catch up with someone. In one swift action, she ripped off her backpack and unzipped it to pull out a kitchen knife to stab the girl directly in front of me right in the back. I froze. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. I turned around and walked straight home. I lived about 10 miles away. I just kept walking. I never looked back. I just wanted to make it home, crawl upstairs, and sleep in. One hot day in June, when I was in 6th or 7th grade, there was basically a riot at our school. Pretty much every kid in the school at lunch recess gathered at the office entrance to the school and started chanting, It's too hot! We wanna go home! It was pretty incredible. A teacher at one point came out and said, We're calling the police! To no avail. Finally, the bell rang, and everyone cheered and went inside. No one I've talked to remembers this event. A student accidentally butt-dialed his mother while the class was watching Platoon. The SWAT team showed up. Apparently some of the guys a few years ahead of me got into the principal's car, took off the brakes, and pushed it up a makeshift ramp to the roof of the shed. I don't know how we got it down. The guys in my year managed to swipe the vice principal's smoking pipe. They put up ransom posters everywhere. In another class, they managed to get into the ceiling tiles and plug socket, so they took an old phone with a dirty ringtone and a charger and left it up there. For whatever reason, because of acoustics, the sounds seemed to shift around the room as you walked. The number got passed around so people could call whenever they needed to disrupt the class for a while. 853 missed calls, 2 missed SMS messages. Seems like every couple months you practice fire drills, and one day the alarm goes off. We start making our way down the stairwell, and there's smoke. I get outside and say to somebody, Wow, they make these fire drills so realistic, smoke and everything. The reply I got back was, The school really is on fire. So, yeah. My school caught on fire. That was legendary. I'm not the brightest tool in the shed. SOMEBODY! Kid gets yelled at, runs out of the school into the woods. Helicopters come and search for hours for the kid. School goes on lockdown. SWAT team finds him a mile away eating Snickers in the woods. Comes back next week like nothing happened. I saw the whole thing out the window. Very crazy. Happened last month. For five consecutive Halloweens in a row, someone managed to set off a smoke bomb in one of the stairwells, causing the school to have to be let out early. They do it just after lunch, after most everyone had just entered their first afternoon class. It was amazing. Like, heck yeah, I'm gonna go home two hours early on Halloween. A massive Roman candle fight involving about 50 kids in the middle of the field on Halloween night. Every Easter, our religious education teacher bolted a big wooden cross onto the wall, and people could volunteer to go on the cross. You stood on a little platform, and there were leather straps to hold your hands in place. He said that if anyone stayed on for longer than five minutes, he paid them five pounds, but nobody ever managed it. This was six years ago. Two years ago, the app Yik Yak was growing in popularity at my school. Maybe about 25% of the student population had it, but since it's anonymous, people just started roasting other people through it. Just as people were no longer using Yik Yak, our craphead principal heard about people roasting other people. He made an announcement talking about Yik Yak and digital citizenship. Naturally, everyone re-downloaded the app, and anybody who didn't previously have it downloaded it as well. Word quickly got out that some teachers got Yik Yak as well and were monitoring it. 
people started to post stuff like fight in the art hallway and laugh as a group of three teachers would speed walk by then towards the art hallway, only to find out there was no fight and see the next post fight in the cafeteria. This went on for 45 minutes until people moved on to better pranks. I'm pulling the fire alarm next period. Our craphead principal misread this as firearm and called a lockdown on the school which lasted for 80 minutes and there were cop cases all around the school. Later that night, my school was on the news and Yik Yak is now blocked within 100 meters of any school in my school board. TLDR, my school got Yik Yak banned in my entire school board. Maybe it wasn't just my school board, maybe it's all of Canada or something, I'm really not too sure. I went to a professional training high school. We had to choose a major for our senior year, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we would spend the entire day in classes involving our chosen major. Strange, yeah, only lasted for a few years. Now it's just a regular magnet school. Whatever. Here's my story. My tech teacher was cool as heck. He'd give us a project on Tuesday morning, and we'd have until Thursday afternoon to turn it in. If we were done early, have fun on the internet. If late, well, that's a strike on your grade. Most of the students busted their butt on projects on Tuesdays, so we could watch Jerry Springer on the TV cart in the back of the room on Thursdays. Me and two other kids would play Warcraft 2 on the network computers we set up. Seriously, this teacher didn't give a crap as long as our work was done. One Thursday, one of the students in my class was flipping around the in-service channels the school had. Sometimes they would play a movie on it for some class. Guess what? Adult films. Hardcore black-on-black -black adult films. Student quickly turned it down and turned the TV from the line of view of the teacher. Teacher still heard it. He came over, coffee cup in hand, looked at the class, looked at the TV that wasn't turned off in time, looked back at the class, took a sip. First off, if anyone offended, no, keep it low. If someone comes in, turn it off. I hope that teacher is living their best life. A guy drove through the school on a dirt bike. He was doing wheelies and dodging the supervisors who couldn't catch up to the dirt bike on their golf carts. Then, later that day, he posted the video he recorded of the whole thing from a GoPro on Twitter. He was a legend. I was in an all-boys high school, and this is just one of the many pranks and stuff we did. This happened a few years before I was in the school, but one guy decided to get back at one of the old crappy teachers we had whose class was on the second floor. He decided to purposefully not do his homework to get in trouble as to set the plan in motion. She was also constantly picking on him, and that day he started crying, fake obviously, and saying he can't take it anymore, etc. He then proceeded to jump out of the window onto a high jump mattress that was placed underneath the window by his friends. Before the teacher could look out of the window, they removed it, and he went to lie down on the ground in a manner which resembled a mangled body. The teacher freaked out, went to fetch the principal and nurse, etc., and before they got up there, he got up and went back to class and sat down at a seat as if nothing happened. Teacher was speechless. Like I said, this happened a few years before I was in the school, so I didn't really hear about the aftermath of their shenanigans. It's also possible that it never happened, and that it's an urban legend going around. In high school, we weren't allowed to wear costumes for Halloween. My senior year, a giant group of us, about a good half or three quarters of the class, decided that we were going to dress up anyway and meet in the parking lot before school to march in together. I spent the night before making my costume, which was a suit of armor made out of cardboard with metallic tape, a sword made the same way, and one of those broomstick horses. The next day, we all gathered like we had said and marched in together. It was hilarious, but I guess they found out, so the deans and assistant deans were waiting for us in the cafeteria to take our IDs so we could report to detention. One of my friends had dressed up as an ATM that he made out of cardboard. When they asked him for his ID, he was ready and slipped it out of a slot like a debit card. The best part was at the end of the day when we all gathered for detention. They didn't have enough room for us and all the other people that were there for other reasons. Out of frustration, they decided to make our detention Saturday ones and spread them out. It was totally worth it though. Strap in, this one's a long one. At our school in the UK, on the year 11's final day of the year, they would do egg and flour day. Essentially, pelting the lower years with eggs and flour. This was a long-standing tradition at my school and went back decades. As you can imagine with parents understandably annoyed at the sight of the kids coming home covered in mess, the school received a lot of complaints. Because of this, the school clamped down on it in the past two to three years with huge punishments for those caught taking part. To get around this, the year 11s typically moved the location to somewhere off grounds where students could be ambushed on the way home, typically the local shops. Anyway, it was our turn. We were the year 11s now. We wanted to make our mark. A group of around 10 or so of us got together towards the end of the year and started brainstorming. It took us about a week to come up with it, and it was perfect. Or so we thought. Here was the plan. The school was recently going through some renovations, so a few things were moved around and a few areas were off limits, including one of the fields. Now, this field was where we would go in the event of a fire drill. 
Because of this, the fire drill point was moved to the tennis courts. Great. Why was this great? Because the tennis courts bordered on the local woods. The very edge of these woods were bordered by incredibly dense growth that was very difficult to see anything through. Between the growth and the tennis courts was a 10-foot fence, and just behind the growth was a pathway. Perfect. So the plan was set. We'll send a guy inside, get him to pull the fire alarm, then send a barrage of eggy flower death to the unsuspecting lower-year peasants beyond the fence. Skip forward to the day of the event. We sent Tim in to be the man on the inside. We were ready and waiting in the woods, armed to the teeth with pancake ingredients. We waited a long time. It must have been an hour and a half at that point. We'll come back to this later. This was before mobile phones, so we had no contact with the man of the inside, an oversight. We sent in Christian to find out what was going on, and we waited. Not long this time, 20 minutes later, the bell went off. It was happening. First, we could only hear the piercing ring of the bell. A minute later, the loud chatter of many prepubescent voices. It got louder and louder. The tennis court was filling up. Students were getting into their lines. We waited for the perfect moment to strike. A few more minutes later, things quietened down. We started to hear the teachers shooting out names, going through their registers. This was it. Time to strike. With the students now silent, it was time to unsilence them. Without saying a word, we unleashed. Cartons of eggs were emptied into the air, over the fence, and down onto the underlings into the most satisfying crack splats. Flower baggies were spilt and tossed over, leaving trails of white smoke before landing with a puff and filling up the area with clouds of potential biscuit. The screams. Oh, they were glorious. The complete sound of chaos. It started with silence. Shock as to what was going on. Then the fear set in. Nobody wanted to be egged. The tennis courts exploded into a mass of running kids, dodging yolk, trying to get out of the way. Teachers trying to find out what was going on, barking orders and trying to calm everyone down to little success. And that was it. Within 60 seconds, we had exhausted our ammo and it was time to retreat. Laughing hysterically and celebrating our accomplishment, we melted back into the woods and fell back to our meeting point. It was done. We were legends. Now let's fast forward a week. Remember Tim? The guy on the inside who took too long pulling the alarm? Turns out he didn't pull the alarm, because we noticed they were all covered by CCTV. Another oversight. When Christian went in, he didn't bother looking and pulled the first alarm he came across. He was called into the school a few days later in order to give a list of names. It was either he did, or prom would be cancelled that year. Can't blame him really, I probably would have done the same thing. Those who were on the list, the choice was either 8 hours community service in the school or be barred from prom. We all took the service and spent the day with the school caretaker doing absolutely nothing. It was great. 10 out of 10 would egg again. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you guys next time.